brand new episode of Gore War. This week on the show, dial that notch up to 11, because we'll be comparing two radio-themed zombie movies to see which one gets the best ratings. This is Pontypool versus Dead Air. And we'll get to that right after these commercial breaks. See, I went off air because it was a dead air. You did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dead Air starts us off at a basketball game where we have uh, some terrorists uh, hide some kind of device which uh, prematurely goes off and releases some kind of toxic gas into the stadium. Uh, we cut over to our main hero, Logan, who is a radio presenter, which is the linking theme of these two movies. And uh, much like Pontypool as well, um, it's, it's talkback radio, so they're very... They're very straightforward, they're very snappy with the, with the people who call them up. Yeah. They don't mess around. And they're a bit controversial, which is always good. Yeah. Now he's played by uh, Bill Moseley. And um, the only thing that I sort of identify Bill Moseley with nowadays is um, House of a Thousand Corpses and uh, Devil's Rejects. So yes, yeah, it's, it's obviously good to see him on there because he's, he's, he already has this sort of slightly disturbing demeanor about him anyway. Now the gas uh, turns people rabid once they inhale it and they basically just go nuts and start killing everybody. So uh, Logan and his crew, which includes his uh, producer and his uh, assistant, um, like co-presenter Gil, or Gil the Man Freeman, I think Old his name was. Freely. Old Gil. Gil. Yeah, Gil the Man <laughs> Freely, I think his name was. Yeah. Um, they're basically held up inside the radio station and sort of, um, they want their involved. Logan himself, he's very insistent on getting the word out and trying to save people, but um, it was everyone, obviously everyone's just trying to get out of here. Uh, meanwhile, the uh, terrorists, or the, uh, the the one main surviving terrorist, uh, enter the radio station mm. with um, some interesting objectives because they want to obviously they want they want to create like riots and like um, yeah directed with, hate. without without giving away the plot twist of the movie them being the terrorists and getting him to say certain things on the radio, it kind of does create like mm -hmm. a, a conflict outside the radio station, which relates back to the main character. Yeah, well, we'll get onto that on characters, but it, I really did like that touch. Mm. Pontypool uh, takes place in... Pontypool? Pontypool. In uh, Canada, and it's pretty much the sort of same style. It's got a radio station, and it's got a main character who is a radio presenter. Uh, but it uh, kind of sets up the idea that this radio presenter was once a high and mighty mm. and now he's been dropped down to do some just casual uh, town radio because of a few stuff ups because he honestly said his opinion on a few things that they didn't like. Mm. Before he gets there a little occurrence happens that was a little bit weird so he decides to make it the topic of the evening which is a girl who comes up to his car and acts a little bit weird and as the night goes on, we start to work out that it's more so the things that he projects through words and through the speech of his radio presenting mm -hmm. that sets off trigger words inside this virus of people. So different words set them off and turn them into, I guess you could say zombies? It's zombies in a sense. Zombies, yeah. like sort of like mindless drones of like, they just, and they, they need to feed on people. And so it's about him... Uh, and also there's a doctor that eventually ends up in uh, the radio station who then uh, kind of divulges, oh, it's about words, it's about you can't really say specific things because there's trigger words for everyone. It's a very interesting concept, so it's not so much um, your typical zombie movie where there's some kind of viral outbreak. I mean, I'm, no points against Dead Air. I mean, I really enjoyed no. it. But it's very unique, whereas... Um, Nothing like that's been done before where it's like, it's kind of almost like propaganda. Style. You could sort of look at it that way, yeah. yeah. I mean, you were saying, actually, while we were watching it, mm. the fact that he's a talkback radio presenter and he was censored by his, by his studio, yeah. and the fact that this virus is spread by trigger words, which yeah. turn people into zombies, it's... Um, so you couldn't really tell whether or not, like, you know, if he's being censored, like, are those words the words that are helping, or are they not? So mm. he, him being censored, uh, it, it's kind of a metaphor for the whole, the whole situation, really. Yeah. While I think both movies uh, have very solid stories, mm. we can say that we've seen things like Dead Air a million times before. A viral outbreak, infects a city, mm. goes global, and we follow a group of survivors and hope that they survive. Now, no points against it, but Pontypool 
that is a really unique concept to the zombie genre. Yeah. And you're also quite worried as well because you're not safe even if you're in like a like hiding. Because no. if you say the wrong word and you and you get triggered, anything you, can turn. you say, like you could be saying something and that's your trick. Like as you go through the movie, they say words and then you realize that that's their word that they're triggered to. Yeah. So for that very creative concept, um, I'm probably gonna have to give Ponty Paul the points for story. As far as film quality goes, you can definitely tell Dead Air is a lot more um, tightly budgeted. Uh, zombie makeup, because we actually saw a bit more of the zombies in this than we did in Pontypool. Um, it wasn't so much wasn't so much zombies. I mean, we had the bloodshot eye, contact lenses, which looked great. Yeah, uh, frothing in the mouth, which was fine. And that was pretty much it. Let's be honest. As far as like, if you're going to sit down and watch this go, you may. I mean, for someone who's not a connoisseur. You may find yourself losing interest in Pontypool a bit faster because of its like lack of ver lack of variety. Uh, I, I don't think for me, I don't think it was that. I think I was losing more interest in uh, Dead Air because I felt like I always felt the pacing was a little bit off. But whereas Pontypool, the pacing is like it's a build up to something, and I felt like there was always something. Good point. Actually, you brought that up because uh, if I may, yeah. There is a part in the movie where a lot of carnage is being described to us. Yep. From uh, Ken, the, the helicopter guy in his mm. van. Helicopter guy. Helicopter guy. Um, like, he's describing a lot of horrendous things that are going on in the town. And I know it's sort of to, to build up, like, the, the horror that's going on. But that's just a little irk for me when we're, like, told all these horrible things. Yeah. And then we don't really get anything happen in the movie. No. I mean, there's only really one mm. attack in Pontypool, and that's when the little girl pounces on them, and then we don't even really see her get dealt with. They sort of just kick the air. Yeah, yeah, there's all these, like, yeah, there's that little bit. But... So it feels a little unfulfilling if you're, like, you want to see some action happen. I think just for the fact that there, there's a lot more to see, it's a lot more varied, you don't feel so confined, which, yeah. depending on what you're going for, I mean, it's really up to you, uh, really up to you, but for a cinematic experience, I mean, we want to see things change. We want to see some action. Definitely. in our zombie movies. Definitely. So I think for those reasons, we're probably going to give uh, graphics uh, effects to dead air. Yeah. Uh, characters of dead air. We got Logan, who he has sort of an on-air persona, and then off-air, yeah. he's a completely different person. Like he has that sort of like uh, media presenting sort of style, and yeah. he. He's sort of he's he's got he's sort of a two faced kind of guy in a, in a good way. But in a good way, I mean, in like a good he, way. Like he's uh, like controversial on air. He's calling people idiots if they're doing yeah. stupid things. But and off air, he's you know like he's a pretty down to earth yeah. guy. And certain um, things, particularly like with, with the theme of the movie being um, sort of racially themed, with like mm. with, with what goes on with the terrorists. Yeah. Uh, then that gets brought up a bit earlier in the movie, and you can sort of yeah. like, you see sort of see how it sort of blends with his lifestyle personally as well, yeah. because of the reveal of his wife and things like that. Mm. And just like little touches like that really add to the character. Yeah, I think they do too. The there's also his producer, the, the redhead chick. She was kind of forgetful. Uh, Gil, his on-air on co-host, mm -hmm. um, he was great. He was a great character, and he had. I mean, he has his own time in the movie too, like mm -hmm. a particular time in the movie. Um, he was a good mixture between Logan, like Logan and Gil, like they really worked off each other really well. You did, kind yeah. of felt like it was almost ad lib, like they were really good at like bouncing back and forth the media. Really the only focus was the characters upstairs and also Logan's wife and child at home, which there was only a very small interaction in the... I guess you'd say the last quarter of the film. Yeah. Pontypool is a very similar uh, cast line. We have obviously uh, Mazzy, uh, who is the talkback radio presenter. He's very snarky. Like you said, he used to be a lot higher up than he was, and he was yeah. shifted down to this uh, lowly position. So he's a bit bitter about it, and he, that really comes through. Uh, Sid, his producer, like I said, she's a bit more memorable because she, well, she sort of becomes a love interest. Yeah, towards the end, yeah. But um, unlike... Uh, the presenter in Dead Air, uh, she's not she's not acting like a ball breaker. No, but she but you can tell that she has a lot of shit to deal with. She's trying background. to be as nice as she possibly can. Yeah, she's in like that situation. this is a small town. 
small towns have to do things a certain way. Yeah. You can't act like a, a guy who doesn't have a target on his back or is invincible. Mm. When you live in a place where you can walk down the street and somebody can, can go, Hey, you, you said that yesterday. Exactly, yeah. yeah. When you're in the big leagues, obviously that wouldn't happen. Mm, but Definitely. Out of the side characters, the one we liked the most was Laurel Ann. Yeah. A, I mean, we mistook her for Anna Faris at first. So many so. times, if you look at, like, I mean, obviously there's going to be pictures up here now, you better see it, but, like, yeah. she just looks like Anna Faris. Yeah, but she's, yeah. like, she's really sweet. Like, she's really nice to him. You can tell she's sort of hero-worshipping on him a little bit as yeah, well. Yeah, she's, like, kind of fangirling a little yeah. bit. Yeah, and she's a soldier as well, so it gives her an extra bit of respect. And yeah. also an extra bit of sadness when she eventually gets turned. Yeah, so. and it, it is kind of... And they make that real... They, they draw it out, but in a good way. Uh, there isn't actually too many more characters other than, other than the Doctor, who... You didn't uh, like the Doctor too much. No, uh, I just... I mean, if you're mixing it with character and story, I think... He was sort of, and you were saying, you agree with me kind of, was he was more of a plot device guy. Like, the, yeah. the idea of the movie to understand that it was about words and such, and then he just sort of comes in and goes, guys, 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 that's what it is. And it was like, oh, I kind of felt like I'd just been yeah. spoon-fed it a bit. And then he's like, bye! Yeah, and he was kind of like a bit of a dick, too, because he was like, oh, man, this is fascinating, your friend's dying. No yeah. offense or anything. She's bashing her head against, <laughs> yeah. the, against the glass. Interesting. <laughs> this is a really tough comparison because, I mean, we love both sets of characters yeah. and they just had some a lot of them had really great moments but in a final comparison oh jesus christ <laughs> i think pontypool may come out on top just barely like that because much we remember the side characters a, a bit more they stand out a bit more than they do in dead air and i think with the smaller cast creating that sense of isolation really works especially with the movie being set in a snowstorm in canada mm -hmm. sort of like a thing-esque uh kind yeah. of feeling for all those reasons, I think Pontypool is just going to take it for characters. And we could delve into things like the political undertones and the, like the secret meanings behind like yeah. words and sounds, things like that. But um, at the end of the day, yeah, I mean, like I said, Dead Air is just sort of a zombie movie that has a radio station on it. Not like I said, it's really great, really well acted. Good, good for an indie day. film. Good yep. for an indie film. It's a zombie movie that's set in a radio station. Yep. Bloody Pool is something that you will definitely remember and talk about a lot more. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, Bloody Pools are gonna take the victory. <laughs> and that's all we have time for this week on Global. So, I'm Fedora. And I'm KY76 on the FM, The Sturge. I'm Ross. That's a flushing sound. <laughs>